Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here, and today we are looking at the Comic Central Comic of the Year, Rags Prologue and Rags Number One. After reading both, I quite like the reading order of reading the prologue before issue one, and I don't think it contains any major spoilers for the regular series, at least none that I've noticed yet. When the Diversity in Comics channel reviewed this book, he said it was a good comic he'd recommend to people who either like boobs or zombies. I don't care for either fan service or zombies, but I'd still recommend Rags as a well-illustrated human drama. I look at nudity in art as something that can either be a cheap substitute for story, or it can be an appreciation of human beauty, which adds to the story. In Rag's case, Regina Rogowski's nudity underscores her very vulnerable position as she fights for her life. The introduction describes this as the story of a woman who just wants to find a comfortable pair of pants. This ends the spoiler-free review part of my video. From now on, hardcore Suma spoiler -a warning. In the opening three-page sequence from Rag's prologue, we see an excellent example of visual storytelling as Rogowski drops a bullet and has to retrieve it. Angled panels are used sparingly to show more detail, create a general sense of unease, reinforce Rogowski's line of sight, and her motion as she quickly snatches away the bullet. Even without much familiarity with zombie stories, Rogowski's actions and her expressions of tense concentration and relief tell us that approaching a dead body is a life or death risk. The sparing use of color is very clever, helping us identify Rogowski's key physical characteristics and other important characters instantly, like Riley, who takes pity on Rags as she's attacked by zombies. Riley follows his instructions to go close the back door, locking both Rags and the zombies out. The panels showing Riley walking to the back door add necessary tension and drama to what could have been a boring scene, a character walking to a door. Instead, the shadows and angular lines keep us on our toes and remind us of the life or death consequences of this seemingly simple action. When Rags manages to scramble through the door before Riley can stop her, she's held at gunpoint out of fear that she's been bitten or infected by the zombies. Rag's expressions are again subtle and help sell her emotional state, from intense fear and pain to more controlled. Her gallows humor on the last panel of Rag's prologue ties into the introduction and hints at how Rag's copes with crisis situations through jokes. It's the kind of gag that can only work when art and writing are working together in harmony. Issue 1 picks up immediately where the prologue leaves off. Rags swearing and her caustic comments about inbred Hex hint at some of her flaws as a character, but her attempt at preserving modesty and her emotional collapse when she can't find a pair of pants also tells us that this is a serious, embarrassing problem for her. It's not a cutesy fan service moment. Riley comes and talks to Rags to offer her first aid, but Rags' hot-tempered drill sergeant reaction is both comedic and somewhat tragic. When Rag sarcastically calls Riley high speed and demands his jacket, Riley somewhat sadly offers it to her. Again, the attention to human expression is what communicates Riley's character to us. He seems genuinely hurt by Rogowski's accusations and insults. In addition to these dramatic human moments, the script adds a few gags which remind us of the somewhat tongue-in-cheek aspect to this story's universe. Rogowski hopes to find a pair of pants at the MacGuffin Mall. The term MacGuffin refers to an object in a story that is important only because characters want it for some reason. Rogowski argues with the leader of the survivors about their situation and her plans to leave. The flashback sequence where Rogowski argues with her friend Sean is very important as it establishes why Rogowski ended up alone and nearly nude in the zombie apocalypse in the first place. I personally have mixed feelings on the pacing of the writing for issue 1. On the one hand, it packs a lot of character development for Rags into one conversation. On the other hand, I think it suffers a bit from telling us rather than showing us what Rags is about. As we've seen in the prologue and the first part of issue 1, Rags has a temper, and Sean starts chewing her out. Since Sean starts the argument, he comes across as hot-tempered and caustic too. Sean thinks Rags is an ungrateful ball buster and that she's hiding from something in her past during her military service she refuses to talk about. 
when I said I have mixed feelings about the pacing of this whole sequence, I think its strength is how it treats Rogowski's character flaws as something which contribute to her problems. Her feistiness is both a strength and a weakness. It gives her the kind of grit she needs to survive a zombie apocalypse, but it also drives away would-be friends and nearly destroys her. The comic art for Rags is ridiculously well illustrated. Beyond being a mere zombie book or booby book, Rags tells a relatable human story. A censored version of this comic exists, giving readers who are uncomfortable with copious nudity a choice if they'd like to enjoy a comic with solid character development, visual storytelling, and color all working together. You can read the digital edition of these comics for just a couple bucks each from Comic Central. I've included all relevant links to the Rags team in the description below, including their Patreon. If you like my comic reviews and art discussions, you can also support me on Patreon. A special thanks to all my $5 and up patrons for the month of July. My patrons are really involved in comics discussion, and they're all worth checking out if you like art and comics. With that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys, and I'll catch you later.